On today's episode of Locked On 76, there's two moves for two young players that were pretty well liked among Sixer fans. Isaiah Joe, Charles Bassey, waived by the 76ers. What does that mean as they move forward and continue to build out their roster? We'll get into it next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97 Father Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partners, always here on the Locked On 76ers podcast from the Enquirer.com Sixers beat writer Keith Pompey. My man, what's happening? What's what's popping, D? How you doing, bro? Oh man, all good, all good. No complaints. Got the uh, preseason over with. We're getting ready for the regular season, playoff baseball, some undefeated football teams. Things are good. Things are good. How about that? Things are good. Yeah, they, they're all right. <laughs> like, nah, I'm just hating, but they, they're good. <laughs> Thanks for making Locked On Seventy Six as your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On Seventy Six is free and available. On all platforms, including right here at YouTube at Locked On 76 as well, Keith. We have to, again, talk about the two players in Isaiah Joe, Charles Bassey, being uh, let go by the 76ers earlier today. We'll also get into Tobias Harris's role. At one point in the final preseason game for the 76ers, doesn't mean much to me, but I know it has been a talking point for a lot of 76ers fans. We need to discuss it. And the win total. Uh, They're going to be up there with the top teams in the Eastern Conference, if not the best. Win total sitting right around 50 and a half, and I think that's kind of low. I want to get your thoughts on that as we uh, proceed with this podcast. But, Keith, got to ask you, man, you are the one who dropped the uh, news on everyone on Thursday morning that Charles Bassey was being let go by the 76ers, according to a, a source, and also you later followed up with Isaiah Joe. What went into this decision-making by the 76ers and letting these two young players go? You know, you know, I don't know. I, I kind of think that when you look at both players, they had a lot of guys ahead of them that the Sixers look at it. I mean, you, you look at um, let's start with Charles Bassey. Um, you know, right now they went out there and they got Montrez Harrell. Um, they, they also have, um, you know, um, of course, Joel, but 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 um, Paul Reed, with Paul Reed. And, and then they got the small ball lineup with P.J. Tucker. So mm-hmm. when you look at it. Charles Bassey is listed as the third string center, but he's actually the fourth string center because PJ Tucker was playing, you know, the small ball center thing. And then you look at that. You got to wonder if Michael Foster is a guy who they really were impressed with as well, because he took his rotation minutes in the last two preseason games talking about Charles Bassey. Um, I I think that, you know, he's a good player. I, I really like Bassey. But I feel like it was just a place and a, a thing where it was just a log jam and they had other guys that they really wanted to look at. And they probably got more impressed with Foster. And who knows, you know, Foster right now, they, they got rid of Joe. They could possibly keep him on the, on the roster and have him going back and forth from the G League. Right. Or like, I mean, but but then when you go down to Isaiah Joe's situation, in my opinion, I think Isaiah Joe is a good player. You know, the, the problem with Isaiah Joe is last year when he had opportunities, he was extremely inconsistent. But you have to give Isaiah Joe credit. He's a guy who came out in the preseason and played well. Before that, in the summer league, he was the best player on the team in the summer league. Now, the problem with that is people look at it and say, you played two years in the NBA. You're supposed to be the best player in the summer league. So when that happens... I think like they really is like, all right, like if he would have struggled, we would have, you know, it would have, it would have made us like definitely say he's not coming back. But, you know, I, you kind of feel bad for a guy who shot four for seven from three in the preseason, but yet and still he doesn't make the team, you know, he doesn't make the team. Yeah. So um, just to go back to the, to the Bassy part after a while, it just felt like he was expendable especially with the Montrezl Harrell addition late in the season. But even during the, the uh, offseason, and quite frankly, we can go back to the end of last season where 
the move was made to send Andre Drummond to Brooklyn in that Simmons Harden deal. And we were waiting for Charles Bassey to really take over those some of those minutes to at least see if he had anything in him to be a rotational player on, on a team. And uh, it never came to fruition. All he did was go in the G League, do the work there, call up, of course, at the end of the regular season, going towards the playoffs and just filled a bench role, filled a, a bench spot and took take up a seat. But he never got into the games. And in the summer, he did his part. He did what he needed to do and playing in the summer league, working out. And then when we get here for training camp and then the preseason games, we don't see him. So you saw this one, the writing on the wall coming. Similar to Isaiah Joe uh, with the Trevlin Queen signing, who was released early in the week, as you reported. But with Isaiah Joe, knowing that he had a non-guaranteed contract and not really lighting things up as good of a shooter that we, we, we know him to be, not necessarily in the games, but, uh, you know, known as a shooter, you know, it was just something that, again, when we look at the numbers crunch of it all, that it, it, it seemed that Isaiah Joe would be one of those candidates to be let go. Wasn't really surprised, mildly surprised in general because of the Isaiah Joe part, to your point of. He had a good first game against the Brooklyn Nets. Played, didn't play much in game two against Cleveland in the same deal for game three against Cleveland. And didn't play at all in the final game of the exhibition season against the Charlotte Hornets. So, again, not too surprised, just a mild one there that they actually went through with it. And uh, I, I just he he's going to I think he's going to find his way in the league somewhere. You know, to me, I think the surprising thing wasn't that either that, you know, that these guys got waived. The, the surprising thing was um, when, when you think about it, is that both of them were waived because when we looked at it, you know, you're talking about the, the final ro roster spot. There were yeah. three guys, Trevlin Queen, Isaiah Joe and Charles Bassey. So you were under the assumption that two of those three guys were going to get waived. So when Trevlin Queen was waived, you say to yourself, you're like, hmm, so it's yeah. going to be either Joe or Bassey. And, and I then both of them. Huh? And I thought it was going to be yeah, Bassey. You, yeah, you thought it was going to be bad, and, and I did too. But then it got to a point because you look at it and you're saying like, okay, but, you know, Joe could possibly give them some shooting or, or something like that, you know. But then you look at it and you say to yourself, like, the more you talk about it, I guess we have to say, you know, you, you look at a guy like Furkan Korkmaz, a guy who some people, they like, some people don't. But he's always been ahead of Isaiah Joe when it came down to being in a rotation. You know, there are people like, well, how come Isaiah Joe can't get on the floor? And Doc would always say, you know, we we, we like Furkan. We like Furk. So now you 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 get you have Furcon and you add these other guys to the mix. And it's one of those things where you're saying to yourself, like, wow, uh, okay, DeAnthony Melton, okay, uh, Shake Milton played, okay, um, Daniel House, right? D Daniel Wellhouse, right? So hmm. they have different skill sets than him, but they all battling for the same position. The same with Matisse Thibel. Um, um, so you know what I mean? So when we look at them, we think about we need that who's a pure shooter, who's a guy who can just shoot. And he's probably one of the best shooters on the team, if not the best shooter coming off the bench. But at the same time, it's one of those things where um it was just a numbers crunch and it was it was tough for him to make that make the squad. Yeah, as far as the Furcon thing goes, when you look at it. We've seen Furkan have more success during the regular season. He has been given more opportunities, but um, he's had more success during the regular season. He uh, has the ability to at least put the basketball on the floor and play make a little bit more than Isaiah Joe. Uh, but Joe was just a young player that I wasn't quite sure if he had enough opportunity to show those things. Now, they see practice all the time, and we don't. We only get to see a certain amount of it at the end, and they're pretty much wrapping it up and then going to see their – their individual drill things with the with the coaches. So uh, he he was a favorite here in town. I know for a lot of Sixer fans wanting to see him get into the game, get some shots off and, and get hot. Last season during the training camp and preseason session, Keith, he was playing really well. And he was part of the rotation. He was pushing, pushing Furkan Korkmaz and others 
for some rotational minutes. But when he got the opportunity early on in the regular season, starting off with the Pelicans and then the uh, the Brooklyn Nets to start off the home schedule on that second game, he didn't fare that well. And right then, Doc Rivers, I guess, has lost the, the faith in him and others, given the opportunity, were able to have a, a little more of a, of a foot of a, of a, a imprint on the game than Isaiah Joe was in a positive way. So, yeah, we'll see, man. I, I think again, he will find a way. Somebody will give him a shot because this this league is about shooting. Someone will give him a shot. Maybe someone will look at something with his with his overall game and feel like they can, in fact, fix it uh, when it did not necessarily happen here in Philadelphia. Charles Bassey, he's a big man. He's a, a, an athletic big man who can run the floor, rim the rim, and can can defend the rim and, and all of that. I think he'll also get a shot, too. So I'm, I'm very curious to see where those two wind up. Uh, before we move on to our next topic of Tobias Harris, do you feel like there's a chance that either one of them could find their way back somehow because of the G League? They're both being second-round picks that – Maybe if they get clear waivers that there's a chance that either one of them come, come back. Or do you feel like they'll be picked up somewhere else and given another opportunity? I mean, you know, I honestly feel that um, that Isaiah Joe, I mean, there's some people like they really like him. Um, I, I can see him coming back on it on a two way. Like if he doesn't get picked up somewhere else. I mean, I, I could see that happening. But but I honestly think that, uh, you know, I mean, Bassey from what I'm hearing is that there's been several teams that have already reached out, you know, mm -hmm. last night, you know, team, you know, there's certain, you know, things ain't like people saw the people were starting to see the writing on the wall, you know what I mean? And, and, and I think, you know, how some things happen well, like, you know, if, if such and such would be waived, would he be interested in, coming to this team, you know, stuff like that. Right. Just saying, uh, you, do you have any client, you know, they don't come out and say it, but you got any clients that's six foot 11, 230 pounds, who doesn't look like he's going to make a team. Do you think uh, anyone like that would be happy? <laughs> you know what I mean? To come. So, so I, I think that he'll, he'll land somewhere. Now, who knows? It could be a two way. It could be whatever, but, um, but, but I, I think he'll be fine. I think both of them will be fine. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing about being waived on a Thursday, because by the time you clear waivers, you can possibly, you know, uh, be set and be good for, for another team. There's potential there for, for both of them since they're still so young in this league. And I do think and they both hold skill sets that that uh, holds value in the NBA. So I think they'll both land somewhere and uh, not come back to Philadelphia. So we'll see where they go and we'll talk about them at, at some point and update everybody on where they eventually land. Coming up on the other side, we got to talk about a veteran, 10-year vet on this team. It's going into, what, year number four on this uh, contract, his five-year extension that he signed with the Sixers, Tobias Harris, what his role is on this basketball team as we move forward to the start of the 2022-23 campaign. We'll do that next right here on Locked On 76ers. Let me tell you about Built Bar as we, Keith and I, both get ready for some long days, some long nights, more travel for him than I. But I also have a lot of long nights also on the radio side and dealing with the Sixers also. And one of the things that I like to do during these late nights and uh, during the game oftentimes is try uh, uh, my, my Built Bar. And if you haven't yet tried the Built Bar Puffs, you're really depriving yourself of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Are you ready? Delicious. Indulgent. Cookie dough. I've seen people eat cookie dough right out of that little tube thing. Uh, I've seen too many people do it. Why not do it when it's covered in chocolate and it's right for you in a form of a puff? They've done it again. Let me introduce you to new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs, light, chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they're covered in everybody's favorite, most people's favorite, 100% real chocolate. Uh, cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories. They have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. All you have to do is to run to snag a box for yourself and your family, built.com. You can stick one in your kid's backpack or something if they want to you know, take a snack. Perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and just keep them for yourself, whatever you want to do. Once again, covered in 100% real chocolate, the new cookie dough chunk puff is fantastic. That means they're healthy, tasty, covered in 
chocolate with the cookie dough, light, fluffy texture. It's pretty good, folks. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat like myself, or just need to grab a quick bite, Built is a perfect protein bar. They don't even taste like protein bars. It's a pretty good snack. They taste better than a candy bar. Dish the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a Built bar. Go to Built. Dot com. Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED ON15. Do it today, people. Do it today for those late Definitely nights. Definitely do it today. Definitely do it today. <laughs> Workout stuff. Got to do it. Got it. I needed a bunch of built bars. Do right? you? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Because I need to keep building up. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Trying to get swole. <laughs> not, not. I, I'm, I'm with Allen Iverson. I'm not in. I'm not into lifting the weights because that stuff is too heavy. I'm trying to do the other stuff. Built, built bar. <laughs> I, got I got you. Thank you for making Locked On Seventy Six as your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts is free and available. Wherever you do get your podcast, that was one of the best quotes I thought Iverson ever had. And he said, you know, about lifting weights and getting stronger. And he was like, y'all want, you know, swole and all that. But the best one for me was when he was like, why don't you lift weights? Because it's too heavy. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was classic. This is the best one to me, man, <laughs> because yeah, it's too classic. heavy. Now he's, you know, he, he gave a little colorful word with it, but he, that stuff is too heavy, man. <laughs> that was the best. All right, <laughs> Tobias Harris. Uh, when we talk about heavy, uh, there's not a lot of heavy lifting that has to go there with the team. They're they're pretty well balanced with their lineup: Harris, Maxi, Harden, and Bead, and PJ Tucker. But with this, and I I saw Tobias Harris talk about this on Sixers.com where he mentioned how he has to put his ego aside uh, for what is upcoming for this team. Uh, we talk about it a lot, Keith. I remember one show we did where the focus of our conversation was talking about sacrifice and what you need to do to sacrifice for the betterment of the team. And Tobias Harris is going to be the one that probably has to sacrifice a little bit more than the others. P.J. Tucker, self-explanatory. We know what he does. He's not looking for many shots. He's a guy that's going to hustle. He's going to do the extra dirty work. He's going to be a leader out there on the floor. He has championship pedigree to back him up with it, with his style of play. It's going to fit in well with this basketball team and with the city of Philadelphia. Tobias Harris has been a player in his time here in Philadelphia where he's been the second scoring option behind Joel Embiid, averaging 17, 18, 19 points a game, and very, very consistent. Oftentimes, we talk about how he's a professional scorer. His number is going to dip, in my opinion, because they don't call plays for him. He has to find it how he finds it. Uh, things break down a little bit. They'll get him to basketball, and he'll get his. He knows how to score, but will it be affected by the lack of touches where you have to get into a groove as a scorer to be able to put the ball into the basket? So I have to ask you, Keith, as selfless as he is, everyone wants to score the basketball, but in the end, you also want to win. What do you foresee his role being with this basketball team now that Maxie is taking his next step? And we know who the two focuses are, because as Doc Rivers told us all, this is not a democracy. Yeah, it's kind of crazy right now. I mean, you know, because when you look at it, um, I mean, it's, it's it's one of those things where it's not like he's going out there and he's struggling. It's just that he just not getting the ball. Like, you know, it, it's unfortunate because everyone has a role, and I don't know what his role is right now. I mean, honestly, like we look at P.J. His role is to get his whenever he can. Yeah, but how are you going to get yours whenever you can? That's the problem. I mean, you just play. can't. That, you see, and that's, the, that's, no the, that's the job of the point guard, too. This but is up to James Harden. James yeah, Harden said yeah. this, that he's going to have to find ways to keep Tobias engaged in the game because you are the point guard. You have to find ways to get your other guys involved. That's his job. It's going to have to be he's his job. Not, he's good, but he's not. See, the problem is he's not a traditional point guard. And, and what I mean, like, okay, it's easy to say that. Now, I honestly think that what's going to happen is 
that people are going to start Ding up and and devising schemes. They're gonna they're gonna go there and they're gonna to try to take away James' passing lane. They're gonna want James Harden to try to revert back to the old James Harden, right? So we're gonna see that. We're also gonna see, um, in my opinion, we're, we're gonna see teams like going after schemes, like I said, to go after Maxi. We we know what. Uh, Joel's going to do. Joel's the most dominant player in the league right now, offensively. You can't stop him when he's on, right? So what's going to happen is that's going to leave opera scoring opportunities for Tobias. Mm-hmm. I mean, right now it's a big three. I'm talking about Maxi, Joel, and Hart, and in regards to shot attempts and all that stuff. And then it's a huge drop off in that starting lineup. And even when Tobias used to when they do the staggering thing it that used to be a time when tobias was like they everybody just looked around let them go now you got guys like montrez other dudes they like nah i'm getting my buckets so tobias is kind of like his role hasn't changed like even when they stagger so to me like when i say what's his role like it is weird because we all know PJ Tucker doesn't want to shoot the ball unless he's got a corner threes. His rod, his his job is to go in there and set screens, defend. Then you look at Maxi, the scorer, Joel Embiid, the franchise, James. He has the ball in his hands. Tobias just out there right now. So again, it's going to evolve. But from what I saw, I haven't seen anything that where I'm saying this dude is going to get ten points a game. Right. I haven't. And and then and then also what it is, is if I know the fans get a little bit like are going to criticize them, but it's hard to criticize a guy when you got four shots. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like four shots like Tobias is in his best when there is a democracy, when the ball is moving and everybody gets touches and shots. He's not in his best when you got a three-headed monster, and you ain't a part of that three. You know what I mean? That That's just it for me. Yeah, so, again, I think it's going to be uh, that he's going to be reliant on his point guard to find ways to get him shots. Uh, Joel B, when those double teams come, and spotting Tobias Harris wherever he may be on the floor, rotating toward closer for a better angle for B to make a pass, his cutting ability uh, along the baseline in the middle of the paint, making himself available, those back downs that he typically does, they have to find a way to, to, to keep the ball in his hands. And Maxi too, because Maxi, one thing about him, we always talk about he's not a point guard. He's a combo guard, more of a scorer than anything. He now has to, as, as he starts to grow in this league and he's ascending as a player, one of the things that he has to improve on if he's not a point guard and doesn't have to worry about that as of yet, but he does have to find ways to make some passes and find his teammates. And he did that okay in game number four against Charlotte. Saw a couple of nice passes that he had. Montrez Harrell got a dunk off a maxi pass and somebody else got got a bucket off of a maxi pass. He's going to draw a lot of attention. So he's going to have to be, again, fully aware of where his teammates are. And maybe we'll see if Tobias Harris will be the recipient of that. But I'm very curious because he's averaged 17, 18, close to 19. Now I'm thinking, Keith, he's probably going to be somewhere in that 14 to 16 range uh, for the season, as far you think, as average, you think he, I don't think he averages it. Maybe fourteen. Like That's why I said fourteen to sixteen. Yeah, I, I'm leaning more it. towards the, the lower it. number, but fourteen to sixteen is where I I, I would put he, him. Right you know there. what the problem is? The problem right now is, and this is the thing. Like you got a lot of guys on this team, and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying they're selfish, but you got a lot of guys on this team who are playing in their final year of their deal. Right. And in order for you to get paid and get picked up, you got to be aggressive. And and I and I feel like, you know, when you I feel like dudes is coming in on the second unit. The, the, the First of all, it's a whole lot deeper now than it was in the past. And it's not a lot of guys that's going to just like Daniel House doesn't should need to shoot the ball a lot. Uh, DeAnthony Melton doesn't. But I think when you got a guy like a Montrez Harrell coming off the bench, you got a guy like George Niang, Shake Milton. These are guys like their offensive skills, scoring and shooting is the best thing that they best attribute. 
So I, I just think if that it doesn't help the team win. Huh? Not, if it doesn't help the team win, it, it's not going to mean anything. True, but, but let me let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. But let me. I know. I understand that. But let me tell you this. Does all three of those dudes that I mentioned, does their defense and role playing help them help the team win? Their no. best attribute is scoring. Yeah, so all I'm saying is it's just going to be like last year, like last year. And, and if some of these dudes, we said that they struggled. For instance, Shake. Shake would come in last year in the stagger, and he's standing in the corner passing people the ball and just standing there. And it was like, yo, what's up with him? Like, he looks bad. But he was – they was basically – they had – back then it was Tyrese, Tobias, Ferk, Shake, and, and name somebody else. And what they did is they were just – passing the ball and standing back. And but I think like this roster, this bench, and the bench was weak because of that. But this year I just feel like it's going to be so much more aggressive to where unless they start running some plays for my man, he he might not get it, man. I, I'm just saying he just might not. Now again, I at first I said 10 points. That's kind of low for him, but I get it. But I don't see him just dropping from 17 to 16. I think it's going to be a a more drastic drop about 14, than that. About 14, yeah. 14 is significant. He'll have his games, but for the most part, he'll have more games than not where we look at him and be like, wow, Tobias Harris only had 12. Not necessarily his fault. We'll see how it plays throughout the game, but uh, we, I think we all know from going to the second leading scorer on the team to now uh, the fourth option and possibly the fourth leading scorer on the basketball team, you know, things are going to look a lot different with the offense. But – uh, Tobias said he's putting the ego aside and he's going to go out there and do his job. So if they win, I'm sure he'll be happy as long as it results in a championship. Uh, as far as the championship goes and resulting in that, they gotta, they're going to get a lot of regular season wins. How many? Right now, the number is at 50 and a half. And Keith, I think that's kind of low. Talk about it on the other side. Get your thoughts. See where you are. And by the way, when you talk about unselfishness and self, there was a story out there that James Harden felt like he wasn't getting enough credit for his selflessness of getting giving that money up and bringing in other people but okay <laughs> all right let's we'll talk about the win total on the other side right here locked on 76ers let's talk about prize picks right you know what d i like prize picks you know why i like prize picks because tonight i'm taking luka Doncic to score more than 26.5 points LeBron James to have more than 7.5 rebounds. Kevin Durant to have less than 6.5 assists. And Steph Curry to make more than 3.5 three-pointers. You know, that's the type of things that you can bet on at Prize Pick, right? What you need to do is download the Prize Fix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit matchup to $100 with the promo code locked on. If your deposit, if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. So don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. And as D says, I say, do it today, people. Definitely. Do it today. That's right. Do it today. And with that, you may be able to find some win totals on there, Keith. Uh, right now, I'm looking at the win total, and it has the 76ers at 50 and a half. And the reason why it stood out to me and, it, and, and I wanted to bring this up was because we know that they are traditionally a 50 win team, 50 plus win team uh, over the uh, last five seasons as they've gotten into the postseason. This is going into year number six. They get into the 50s very easily during the regular season the other one which made me bring this up was the brooklyn nets at 50 and a half right now uh keith and if i scroll down here a little bit more and take a peek i am seeing milwaukee at 52 and a half and the boston celtics at 53 and a half and we already know all the things that took place with their offseason with the chance of them maybe falling back a little bit because how important the head coach was a year ago in Emmy Udoka. So do you feel like that number is a little bit too low? I think 50 and a half is a little too low. As good as the East is, 
I think it's a little bit too low uh, for the Sixers at 50 and a half. I mean, how many, like, so they got the fifth Sixers at 50 and a half. How many do they have? With Boston? Brooklyn. Oh, with Brooklyn. You know, 50 and a half for both Boston, 53 and a half, Milwaukee, 52 and a half. Wow, that's kind of tight, though. It's really, like, it's really tight and batched up. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I think, like, it's easy to say, like, they're going to be a 50-win season. I mean, 50-win team season. You yeah, know, they, um, they've done it. Yeah, they've done it before. So, to me, it's kind of like if you say they're going to be 50, it's kind of like, all right, um, I, I don't really have – I don't really know what they're going to do, but let me just throw 50 out there because I know that's going to be around what they're going to do, right? I mean, I know that it is more detailed into that, but um, but that's what it seems like. My, you know, my thing is I'm not really concerned about how many games they win this season. I'm, I'm not personally. Like, because I feel like, you know, right now they're, they're going to win 50. But from what I've seen in this preseason thus far – I feel like they're going to be a team that, you know, they're going to have to go through a couple growing pains. They're going to have to figure themselves out. Guys are going to have to get their roles, right? Um, but to me, it's more so, like, let's say if the Sixers won 57 games and they went out in the second round. Like, I'm, I, like it's great that they, they're favored to win 50, but I'm tired of seeing these 50-point teams that can't get out of the second round. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, you know, the regular season, the regular season is important. It, of course, is important. But at the same time, you know, we've come to a point in Philadelphia that is like it's all about the playoffs. And Doc Rivers could win 59 games. He can win 60 games. He can win 63 games. But if his Sixers go out in the second round, he could get coach of the year with that. But if they go out in the second round, he might not be the coach here. He probably won't be the coach here next year. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, to me, it's cool. Um, but, but again, like, I, I, I really could care less, man. I, I want to see what they can do in, 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 the, in, the, in the playoffs. I mean, they have to get out of Absolutely. the second round. Of course. Yeah, of course they got to get out of the second round. Of course, we'll talk about that a lot more as we get closer to Tuesday's Season opener against the Boston Celtics. Why are you trying to mess up the exercise, man? All I asked you was about 50 and a half, and was that low? That's all I asked you. Why? You- yeah, it's, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> of course it's low. Uh, but, yeah, of course. no. We, we have to go through the 82 games. We have to go through the 82 games. If not, we would fast forward. But that would take away the fun of the basketball season uh, in general. But, yeah, 50 and a half is too low. We've long for these last couple of years, we've long looked past these regular season wins, the total, because it doesn't mean anything. It's it's about the playoffs uh, these last six years. So uh, we'll see what they do this year. They have a very good team and a very good chance of advancing very deep into the Eastern Conference playoffs if they do it together, if they put this team together. And as Keith always says, do it today, people do it today. That it could not mean any more for the Sixers, as we talk about, do it this season, do it this season, because or else, as you said, some guys will be without some gigs uh, for for the NBA, man. So listen, we got to thank everybody for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, go check out the ultimate pro basketball preview 2022, a six episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NBA season. The local team experts and the NBA insiders of the Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey all combining into one ultimate NBA preview. Search for Ultimate Pro NBA Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Keith, do you mind letting the folks know where they can find us? Yeah, like, you know, definitely. You, you can, wherever you get your podcast, you can get this podcast right here. You can also check us out on YouTube. But I tell you, if you go to the YouTube channel, when you get on there, you see that Liberty Bell, you click on that Liberty Bell, ding. And then next thing you know, you will become um, one of our latest subscribers. Now, what you have to do is today, I'm telling you, when you get done with this podcast, you might want to make sure tonight when everything is cool tonight, you go and listen to my man on his show. 
97.5, The Divine Giving Show. He's going to be on there tonight, not as long as he normally is because, of, you know, the stuff that's going on, flyers, games, and stuff, flyers all that stuff. Football, but, he, all that stuff. The, but he's going to be on there from 1030 to 12 a.m., right? And then after that, make sure you keep up with my man all day at Divine G975, a great Twitter follower. So go ahead right now, follow him on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. That's P-O-M-P-E-Y on Sixers. Divine G975, D-E-V-O-N-G 975 on Twitter. And you can read my stories about Charles Bassey, his journey, what it, what, where does he go now that he's been waived. Also, you can read the stuff about um, the overall guys being waived in, in, in today's Philadelphia Inquirer on inquire.com. And as my man D says, I always say, make sure y'all do it today, people. Definitely do it today. <laughs> Definitely do it today. Keith, I think we did a good job today on the podcast. We hope everybody enjoyed it. Always fun, man, being with you. And we'll catch up next time. Thanks, man. Yeah, just don't ask me again about a 50 win season. I'm tired of those 50 win seasons. I want to see a, I want to cover, I want to, you know what? I want to cover a Eastern Conference final. I want to see what that's like. That's I, what do I, I do I too. I do too. We done covered tanking. We done covered, like you've been covering the Sixers longer than I have. Yeah. You have yet to be in it, cover an Eastern Conference final. And you know what, man? I thought that 2021 year, when they were the number one seed faced Atlanta in the second round, I thought that was actually the year that they were going to be at least in the NBA finals. That was the one I felt after the Jimmy Butler, JJ Reddick team in 19, I felt the most comfortable saying that they were going to the finals that year. And um, we know what happened. And uh, Ben Simmons is no longer here. Brett Brown is, you know, has been gone, but that was a Doc Rivers team. So basically he hasn't done anything any different than Brett Brown. And um, yeah, man. So yeah, fifty wins. But just follow the format, man. We got a format. Sometimes, right. you know, it's all good. We can freelance. We we ad lib a lot of times. It's cool. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I just get tired of the fifty wins. <laughs> like, like, yo, they won fifty wins, but they won out in the second round. You know um, what I mean? Like, let's see. Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. <laughs> you know, gotta I mean? get out of it. Gotta get out yeah, of it. All right, know. man. We'll talk. We'll talk later. Thanks. All right, bro. Peace. All right.